Hello and welcome! I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike. But together we are Modeling for Advantage! Hey! hey. Hello! Well, Mike, I've got a brand new box. It says Kasserine on it. Kasserine. I keep wanting to say Kaiserine. I don't know why. <laughs> Um, do you want to tell them what's in it and I'll open the box? This box contains two forces and everything you need to play Flames of War. Very nice. One American force, one German force, one complete rule book, one quick start guide and 13 unit cards. 13 unit cards. For the Americans you will get a headquarters of one M3 Lee, a tank platoon of three M3 Lees, a lot of M3 Lees. A tank platoon of three M4 Shermans and a tank platoon of five M3 Stuarts. So just to avoid confusion, you get three M4s and nine M3s. Yes. But they're two different types of tank in them M3s. We have the M3 Light, mm. the Stuart, and yep. the M3 Medium, the Sherman. The, oh, the Lee, sorry. The Lee. All right. Yeah. So this is one of the two new start sets for mid-war flames of war <gasps> oh let's just get that plastic smell there it's like it's it's like a it's like a hors d'oeuvres tray it's all kind of it's um it was obviously packed loosely and um, neatly but it can move around yeah well I, I don't know that's a bit that's a bit nordic isn't it sir yeah interestingly already seen on the outside of the box look at that you've got then they say you've got everything you need you can cut out the tokens. <laughs> now, <laughs> cutting out tokens, all right, but at least they've provided them. Yeah. Because this set, it's either 42 or 44 pounds, I can't remember what it is, probably $50 US and everybody else is factored around that relative exchange rates, rates I'm not sure. There's a lot in here for the money. Yeah. We I didn't even list the Germans yet. Oh, did I insert, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling what the Germans have got, my bad. So we have a headquarters of one Panzer free. Nice. A tank platoon of five Panzer free. Mm -hmm. Three Panzer fours mm -hmm. and three five centimeter anti tank guns. Oh, so there's some guns in here. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah, Panzer uh, all the stuff. All right. First thing out of the box, then. Woo! I'll toss you one over there. We've got the M4A1 Sherman. So this is a Sherman two. In British service. This is the same Sherman sprue that came and hit the beach. Um, did it say we get four of these or three of these? I'm seeing three so far. Three. We've got three of these. Uh, this is one of the best kits they've made for simplicity. This kit goes together extremely well. I'm going to end up saying a lot of the same things over and over about this. Is um, So things like, it's part of the, the, the newer design plastics. The tracks and running gear, they're all molded in a single piece which is really nice, so you don't put the drive wheel at the wrong end and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the fidelity on it is still pretty good. Um, it's also keyed, so when you fit it to the lower hole, there's two holes on one side and three in the other. So everything is gonna work. But um, the beauty of this pit, but so few parts goes together very well. Um, and then the, you've got two guns and two different mantlets. For the, the mantlets, basically the mantlets get bigger as the as you progress through the war um, and you've got two different transmission covers most of the american ones tend to have this slightly later smooth transmission covers the cast rather than the, the yeah the riveted and whereas the british one has got a three part transmission cover usually although th there is variation within yeah. both of those you even get a nice little bit of tarp uh, on the side um, you know, just just so that they can they can put some shelter and out some whatever. Deck as well up in the corner. Yeah, a little, little bit of stowage, spare haven't, wheel. Haven't put together over fifty of these. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice easy kit. You can you can, you can chain build these yeah. very very quickly. Yeah. Get about five or six of them. Chop chop chop. But glue glue glue. Yeah. So while the lower holes glue when yeah. you build the turrets, etc. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And um, there's not that I'm not saying that the, their other kits are bad. I'm saying this one is especially easy to use. Yeah. And um, for me, the skirts. A lot of the American tanks don't use the skirts on the Sherman. The British ones tended to, but that that again, you can use that to mix and match. In the desert, I'd go with the skirts. Yeah. 
generally speaking. But if you want to make like, um, if you need to make an observer tank or something, this is again a space where you can customize them to look a little bit different from one another. Yeah. Um, so open and close turret uh, ring for the commander. For the, for the for the commander's hatch as well. Yeah. And have you got two? Yes, you've got two. So the weakness of of this sprue design is usually the um, fifty cals. Yeah. It's just because they're so fragile, they've got very very slim spr um, sprue gates. But even cutting them off with a scalpel or an exacto blade for our American friends. They often snap. They're giving you two on every sprue, knowing that that may well happen. Yeah, again, with all my Americans, I've got a box of just the 50 cows. Left over. So that when I break one during game, <laughs> yes. it's, it's easy enough to pull another one out yeah. and glue them back yeah. on. Nice and simple. So the M4 Sherman in uh, in the desert, this is a game changer tank. Yeah. This is, you know, we, we know so much about World War II from late World War II, from Northwest Europe, from after D-Day, but the reality of it is in 1943, this thing is vastly superior to whatever's in the field. The only exception to that is the one Tiger Battalion <laughs> that was in yeah. Tunisia. Um, but it, it's better armoured, it's really it's a, it's really reliable tank, it's cheap to make, it's a, it's a cast upper hull. Yeah. Um, and it's got a 75 mil main gun and the Americans yeah. are making hundreds of them a week or whatever. Uh, nearly 50,000 made during the war. Right. Um, That's a lot of time. Allegedly, even the, the World War Two specs were still when some saw action in the Iran Iraq War. Hey, yeah, according to my research, <laughs> according to your research, the the Iranians still had a few kicking around. Yeah. Great little kit that one. Get a few of those. Next up, then, um, should we have a look at the uh, the M3 Stuart? There you go, Mike. Can you have a look, a look at that? Now then, uh, this is. Um, so the the M three the M three Americans seem to have a problem with naming tanks. There's more than I think. There's three tanks called Patton. Yeah. <laughs> there's two tanks at least I know of that are called there's the M three Stuart and the M five Stuart, and it's not like the M five Stuart is just an upgun one of the. It is a different tank. It does look quite similar, but it is different. But this this is a um, because there's more versions of this. There's it's a much more complicated sprue. Um, yeah. So you've still got the sprue gate, uh, you've still got the tracks and the running gear again assembled as a single piece, but you've got more than one turret option here. Yep. Yeah, and you've got more than one upper hull. I'm just wondering what the difference is there. It does appear that it's just the um there's an there's an extra box on the, the engine cover on the rear. Yes. Does that mean it's got a bigger engine? A later one. It does actually say in here it is telling you to build the one without the big box on the back. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's also got um, external fuel tanks, um, which you can attach to yeah. it. Which again, in the desert, you're likely to see that. It's long range water. Um, and it, yeah, and you can build this. It's got again an open and closed commander's yeah. hatch. So there's, there's flexibility here to build ones that might see service in, in Italy and so forth. And there's Stuarts and Honeys. I don't know whether that whether one's the American service and one's the British service, because it's the same sprue if I you buy the British think Honeys. from doing the, the M5 uh, Stuart, mm -hmm. I think there was a different, the one was a British hull and one was an American. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if that's If that's actually yeah. what that difference is. Yeah, so ha haven't built one of these, but again, the pieces w work in the same kind of way. As I said, you've got a lower hull to which you attach the tracks and the running gear. Yeah. Then you put the upper hull on and it slides. It does have these high side panels. So having built these kits before, just be a little bit careful when you're putting that upper hull in and you've got your plastic glue on that, that definitely fits solidly because yeah. that's the kind of place you'll get gaps. Yeah. Yeah, just, just hold that firmly in place. Um, when you put the upper hull on until until it's sticking or you might get a bit of a gap yeah yeah but again a, a nice straightforward put plenty of these together for uh, yeah but more the m5 version or the m8 yeah yeah so. and you get um so again you've got two of the 30 cals ah yeah so you've got the there's there's the gun version and there's the howitzer version yeah there's one with a with a short with a short gun that you could build from this kit, but it's not recommending you to build it in here. Yeah. And again, you've got optional skirts. You've got a little bit of tarp, which is different. Which again, they're not reusing the yes. same piece. So you can use this bit of tarp on one of your other tanks, 
Really nice, really pleased to see that one. Extra fuel, the fuel cans and also fuel tanks. Mm. And a few, a couple of toolboxes and spare wheels as well. So oh, then that, we have got some instructions in here. They're fairly straightforward to follow uh, this type of instruction um, until you run into a problem. <laughs> With most of the tanks, yeah. this has been absolutely fine. But sometimes, because it's like that 3D drawing, it's not quite clear where a bit is going. I don't remember that being a problem with any of these though. No. Um, right, and then the last of the American tanks, which is the mainstay of this one, which is, uh, there you go. Uh, this, is, this is the one I've not seen, because um, I've not built any M3s. Right. So, Lee's or Grant's, so. So this is a 2017 sprue. See, um, talking about this tarps and storage. This one has interesting storage boxes because they have to fit, you know, the hull on the Lee is tapered at the back. So the storage bins on that are also tapered. So these are not easy to use anywhere else. Um, you, again, you've got a different a different piece bit of tarp. You can build a Grant or a Lee with this. Yes. You've got the two completely separate turrets. And in that in that great way that Flames of War usually do, they're not always, but usually do, is if you can build more than one version from the pieces they're providing you, like it's just got a turret swap, they've given you two turret I've bases. just noticed that, yeah. I was just... they're not, you know, other companies yeah. would skimp on that to deliberately stop you from doing that. They've given you the two turret pegs. Really like it. So... The Lee, then, Mike. Have you? You're a big tank museum fan. Have they, have they got yeah. a Lee or a Grant there? They, they have. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, photos will be available. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's um, it's actually done in desert colours of um, sort of like an orange and a yellow. Mm -hmm. Um, very very tall vehicle. It's yeah. Yeah. Even, even the Sherman was tall. When you when you see the Lee, yeah, it's it's massive, and the and the Grant doesn't have the cupola with the extra machine gun on it. No. And the Lee's even taller than that. So. And, the, and so the, the difference between the American and the British one is really in the upper surfaces. The British turret is bigger because they've got an extra guy in there with a radio yeah. in, in the turret. Whereas the American one's got an extra commander's cupola or cupola yeah. with another machine gun yeah. in it. So there's, a, there's that little turret on top of the Grant with a 37mm gun. And then there's another turret yeah. on the American one yeah, with so, a machine gun. So the Grant was a six-man crew and the Lee was seven. Yeah. And so that, that's another problem, right? Because Valentine's got a three-man crew, I think, yeah. for, for comparison. So there's a lot of manpower goes into this tank. Yeah. And it's got the problem that its principal weapon is hull mounted Yeah. That 37 mil anti-tank gun is no joke in 1941, 1942. But against the uh, Panzer 3s and 4s, it's not going to do the job at any significant range. Your main armament, not only is it hull mounted, it can try, it's got some traverse in it, yeah. but it's mounted on one side. Yeah. And you have to expose, and you know, in terms of fighting from a hull down position, you've got an enormously high tank, most of which has to be exposed to fire. The, the running gear is very much similar to the Sherman's, the same M4, uh, the running gear. Um, just looking at the equipment, there's, on one of the toolboxes, there's even a sculpted axe on the top. Yeah, yeah. So, which is a nice feature. Yeah. You've also got the option to have it with the longer 75, which I think is only in American service. Yeah. Um, and what they did what they did with these tanks is it's a perfectly good tank if the other guy doesn't have really modern tanks. So they shipped them all out to the Far East. Yeah. After they finished with them in the desert, where they were they weren't great, but they were good enough. You go and fight the Japanese, the Japanese can't deal with the front armor on this. You know, there isn't the proliferation of anti-tank weapons. There isn't the wide open spaces. So this thing is, a you know, can crush plenty of jungle. Look at the, if you look at the mountain for the whole gun, there's a there's a pin socket in the bottom and then there's a whole turret section that you've got to glue back on top. Now you mention it, because uh, I've built <laughs> some of these. That, it, it, yes. So uh, thinking about, there's also, looking at the other tanks, this is the most complicated kit in yeah. here. It's not horrendously complicated, but you have got, like you said, you've got, you have to put the gun in, there's a pinhole into which the yeah. gun goes. So if you don't glue it, it is going to give you traverse on that, but then fitting this top bit in, it is a, it is a little bit fiddly if you've got big sausage fingers or whatever, but it's perfectly doable. It's perfectly doable. I've done quite a few of these. 
So having, having not played these, would this have the in Flames of War? Would it have the like the fixed front arc of a of a Stoke or a? Oh, that's an interesting question. Right, as Mike mentioned it, uh, I got, got the unit cards uh, out and had a had a look. So the M3 Lee has got the forward firing rule. Yeah, can only yeah. hit targets fully in front. The uh, the other gun, the th and that's got an anti tank power of nine or ten on the on the long version. So against your Panzer threes and fours, it's perfectly capable of dealing with them. Uh, they look like it's 15, 20, and 25, so it's five points a tank, plus one if you want to give it the long gun. But the turret mounted gun has got an anti-tank of seven, but it also has this secondary weapon rule. So it shoots after the main gun has fired, but it has plus one to the target hit number, and it has a rate of fire of one. You can fire it exclusively on its stat line, yeah. or you can fire it like that. Um, yeah, interestingly, this vehicle this also seems to be carrying smoke ammunition, and it's got the stabilizer rule. And the stabilizer rule is a funny one if you knew. It's good and bad. Yeah. So if Americans move and shoot, they still get to shoot twice because of the stabilized guns. Although a lot of the tank crews didn't actually use it. Yeah. Um, but if you do shoot, it's not a perfect stabilizer. So you get the, you maintain the rate of fire, but it increases your target hit number. Um, and I don't think you get to opt out of that, but that often pushes your hit number yeah. to, to, to unreasonably high, and you probably would rather take the one shot. Um, the maths on that is probably exactly equal, uh, but that's the M3, and that's the M3 Lee Tank Company, which we got the cards for. So that's the Americans, um, and they're, interestingly, I mean, the Stuarts have only got a front armour of three. They're just bullet magnets. Yeah. Because they've got an anti-tank rate and a seven, they're probably not penetrating very much. And there's five of them in here. But your Lees and Shermans are going to be really, really tough in this. Uh, going on with the Americans, we have got a pair of tank commanders. You've seen these before. It's the oh no, it's a dual sprue. So you've got a pair of dual sprue tank commanders, Americans on one side and Germans on the other. It's nice that they include these. Definitely. Um, in Flames of War, the leader rarely matters, but it can matter. So identifying your command tank with one of these. Because um, the way it works, it's about movement. You've got to be within six inches of your leader to be counted as in command. And if you're not, you either stay where you are or go back to him. Yeah. It's not, you're not forced to stay within six, but you can't move independently afterwards. But then you've got the mistaken target rule to try and save you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's good to see your forces <coughs> together. That concludes our look at the Americans. You're nice. Yeah. And these are nice. These are nice dice. Interesting because they're not, color. Same well, color. so they're the, they're the desert colors. Yeah. So the Americans have got, you know, the so the Americans in the desert have got yellow rather than white stars yes. against the kind of olive drab background. And the Germans have got the kind of the Africa core sand. So they could give you any 20 dice. But they've given you ones in the, in the colours, and I think that's a really nice addition yeah. uh, to the starter set. Just just a little teeny bit of immersion, right? Yeah, and and you've got green dice, <laughs> and you've got green dice, and green dice are always the best ones, right? Uh, last thing in here is the Germans. Now for the Germans, we've got two tank types. So we've got Panzer threes and Panzer fours. So. The Panzer III sprue is one of their earliest sprues. And has it got a date on here? No, 2016. Um, so this kit has got all of the simplicity of the more modern kits, but it does have a few drawbacks. I don't know if you've seen this one, Mike. Is the sprue gates are a lot more solid. Yes, yeah. yeah? I've, I've built a few, um, uh, few Panzer III's. Um, I think the... Russian starter set. There was some Panzer Freeze in the, the Russian uh, with the Stalingrad set, Stalingrad or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, obviously, in the later war, these are normally your artillery reconnaissance. So I built a few of those. Um, yeah, so you got to put the deck cover over the engine. Yeah, and and that's a cute little piece because it's double sided. Yeah. For the different versions, so you want to again, you want to be checking <clears> on the instructions. If you haven't noticed, the the engine deck cover is double-sided and it does, yeah, it does does show you. So this is where their instructions start getting a bit more complicated, especially because they're in black and white here. 
is there are multiple versions of the Panzer III, yeah. and they do have different engine deck covers. It is a double-sided piece. That's just a nice little bit of design. I think it's like, well, you only need one of these. Let's put the detail yeah. on both sides. Um, so which which mantler and which engine cover and which the up armored version you've got a different there's a there's a reinforcing piece where the driver's hatch is you know and the kind of ridge on the yeah. upper hole here there's two different pieces that go in there the, I, I remember the the stowage box that goes on the back of the turret mm. there are two sort of like nodules on the back of the turret but still trying to get Trying to get it to fit. Yeah, so you've got the turret, and then you've got the extra bit extension on the back. Oh, the turret bin. Yeah. Yes, sorry, yeah. The turret bin. It goes on the back yeah. there, yeah. Um, and, and and there's a curious feature. The cupola is keyed. Yeah. Which which I don't think I don't think is actually necessary. <laughs> I suppose it makes sure you've got the hatches, because they, they open this way, not that way. Cause, yeah. Because the Russian ones open forwards, don't they? Yeah. So if you built, if you hadn't built German tanks before, but yeah, the king, so you put it the right way around. I find it's, I find it's quite interesting the, considering it's a circle. The Panzer III was a was a three man turret, mm. and the commander sat right at the back. So mm. yes, yes, absolutely, and I think he's his own radio man as well. Yeah, but yeah, lo uh, lovely detail. So this is going to build you variants. For those of you that know the period, uh, to roundabouts, uh, roundabouts L or M. So you've not got skirts here, um, which I don't think were used in the desert anyway. The skirted not version. Because no. skirts were introduced to stop anti-tank rifles, which the Russians shirts used. Shirts and armor? Shirts and, yeah. Shirts and, yeah. The Russians used loads of them, but we didn't use them that much. Um, not, and, not, and it wasn't that the desert is a bit of more of an open battlefield probably there weren't opportunities to be flank shot with an anti-tank rifle very often um, but you do have the short 75 so you can yeah. build you can build an uh, whether it's an M or an N I forget which it is very very late pan for a Panzer 3 but not with the spaced armour yeah. the shirts and, 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 and around the turret this kit there are other kits they make which are basically there's an upgrade sprue for this but this is the main battle tanker this period. Yep. Um, with with the five with the five centimeter gun. Yeah. Although it started out with the thirty seven, um, but they designed it with a turret ring that could take a larger turret. So mm. when the fifties became available, or the five centimeters, sorry. Yeah, yeah. They they could do the change out and philosophies changed. Originally, the the Panzer four was going to be the anti infantry tank, and this was the anti tank tank. Mm. And then. As the 50 mils came in and the long 75s, the roles changed in the German army. Yeah. Um, and it was about turret ring again. Yeah. There, there was just slightly more space in the turret ring of the Panzer IV. Or, so as they were bringing a long 75 in, they were able to fit it into a Panzer IV hull. So as you say, they changed. But there aren't many Panzer III's with the short 75 yeah. because production moves over to Stug. Yeah. Um, so one more tank to look at, which as we're talking about it, it's the Panzer IV, sir. So this is the early Panzer IV. Um, it, so if you've if you've seen the late war Panzer IV, it's very similar um, in terms of the lower hull, upper hull, um, rear plate, glasses plate, and engine deck, that kind of stuff. What's different um, though is it doesn't have mounts for the spaced armor. Yeah. Yeah. On on this. And then you have different guns. There's three guns here and two mantlets. So the the two seventy fives. You've got a single and a double baffled long gun yeah. here. Which is it saying? Yeah, suggesting. Now the double baffled one. I think is later still. I think that's maybe more of a nineteen forty three. Uh, gun, but I don't know for sure. But the, in all the photographs I've seen of the long bow, um, 7.5 centimeters in the desert, they've got the, the single yeah. baffle muzzle, muzzle brake. Um, but the short one, this how it's, uh, is the howitzer. It's, it's tiny, the short 75. And it's on this, it's, there's this strange bit of odd shaped metal around it. Do you know what that's for, mate? The only thing I can think of when I've seen it is it must be some sort of support. Just for recoil, or so that was my original thoughts was was along those lines. But it's actually like quite a thin piece of metal. And it's like if that can really support the weight of that gun, that gun doesn't need supporting. What it is, 
is it's so that it must be to do with the positioning of the radio is it's to knock the aerial over so it doesn't get damaged yeah so as, as the turret turns this 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 d shape around the gun it, it it knocks the aerial over before the gun hits it <laughs> now th there's longer guns on other tanks and there's longer guns on this tank later yeah. so it must be something about the position of the aerial in that particular model of tank but that's that that as i have been told that's what that's for and it may, looking at it it's like yeah that would do that right it, that, yeah. that works yeah. that scans um but otherwise these and you know when you're saying about the turret ring before yeah these turrets the panzer three and the panzer four are almost identical in size and shape they look extremely similar um, and i know this because my when i look at my desert tanks painted i couldn't tell you so if i've got one with a short 75 whether it's from a panzer three or a panzer four kit because they're so very similar there are differences but they're very small <laughs> yeah. Um, so that yeah so most of the desert tanks though are going to be the short 75 but if you're playing this and you've got to fight lees and shermans yeah probably want to build some of the long 75s out of these or you're going to struggle with the combat power so let's have a quick look at the guns yeah on those tanks so um hmm. If you're brand new to Flames of War, your Germans are going to be a bit difficult to use at first because you have many different versions of the same tank. Um, but just playing out of this set, you don't have points is, is not your problem and you didn't pay a great deal for all the vehicles. So just to experiment, build build a couple of each or whatever, you, however you want to do that. Um, but the Panzer IV with the long 75 has got the 10 anti-tank power, which is going to give you... You've got five front armor on the Lee and six front armor on the Sherman. Whereas the Panzer three with the, with the five centimeter is nine. So you, your penetration chance is less than 50% with your Panzer threes. And there's still quite a lot of these American tanks. That said, there's not, there's not a huge number. There's no wrong, there's no wrong decision with them. You know, don't worry about it too much because you also get the five centimeter pack. I don't know if you've seen this. So this is your um, early going into mid-war. Um, the German army goes to war with the 3.7 centimeter guns because they've not built large numbers of these yet, but they're expecting this to be their principal anti-tank weapon. Um, and certainly 1941, 42, this is yeah. their principal anti-tank weapon. There's lots of them around. And it's, it's a nice little sprue. Um, again, it is an earlier one and you want you need to be careful when you're removing this from the sprue and this it's, is a good point to compare this to the sherman sprue that about their growing confidence as a company the sprue gates on this yeah. are very slim you know these these can these can almost push out of the frame you could certainly you know if you got a, got a kitchen knife or something you could get them out yeah. whereas these sprue gates are stronger and the problem with that is these pieces are much smaller and more fragile so when you when you come to build this you, you need to be careful yeah yeah um so you built you built a few of these mike any any tips yeah with the um the gun there's the right by the breech there's two mm. of the four nodules and trying to get in there with a pair of side cut clippers yeah. Um, you, you, you often bend it. If you've already cut off the other points, it's more of a risk. So mm. you've got to be very careful. So one of the tips that you get uh, you get from these is to try and relieve pressure on the sprue. Yeah. Because it's all held in, in space. It's not like it's under tension, but there's no give. So what you might want to do is to make some is to make some cuts on the outside frame, and it's just going to give the pieces yeah. a little bit of space. It's not 100% going to solve your problem, um, and, and there is a chance you're going to break this particularly because of where the where the sprue gates are or even the carriage but if you can just cut it in places that are not close to it first just to give it a little bit yeah. of movement that will help a lot with that problem i haven't broken one of these make i've made no, four of these I, I, but i feared that i would <laughs> I, I've, I've had the whitening of the gun where the plastic's been stressed right yeah yeah but, well you've had that stress yeah, yeah. 
All right, um, last last few things in there. So you get a couple of bases upon, or the three bases upon which you're going to put these yeah. pack forties. The they're not pack forties, are they? They're pack something else. They're five centimeter. It's not going to tell me. Pack thirty eight, maybe. Um, the way that uh, anti tank guns and artillery work in Flames of War is as the guns get bigger, the bases get bigger. There's guns that go on. So this is an infantry base that you've got, and these are the base plugs for them, if you've not seen them before. And this size of gun, you can mount long ways. The smaller guns you mount sideways, and the bigger ones still, you then get bigger artillery bases. So it's just an interesting visual indicator to your opponent of yeah. what kind of caliber of gun that's gonna be. Um, now, so you've got, have you got some of these desert ones? <laughs> I've not seen the desert ones, but you're not seeing the desert they're ones. thermoplastic. So, well, these are not thermoplastic. These are the, oh, are they? Now, I think these are what came before their current process. This is, is this, no, maybe it is. Because they've had a few different processes. Now, the thing, I like these. The detail on these is pretty good. Um, you do need to be careful when cleaning these. Use a sharp blade and cut, don't scrape. But they don't need a lot of cleanup. The, yeah, these are definitely better than the ones on the, the, the light war guns. Yeah, yeah. You think some of the more modern yeah. thermoplastic stuff. So, because um, as I said, they've tried a few different processes. Yeah. The thing what I like about these though is if you look closely, is these guys have got really big noses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, they're, they're not they're not huge, but for the scale of the model, yeah. they've got big noses. <laughs> but I like my Germans being a bit dodgy, right? Yes. <laughs> so, Big nuts, oh. kraut, get out of here. Um, so German guns, so is is this going to be a balanced game? I don't know, but it's certainly, it's an interesting place to start. If you want to start in the desert, um, you've got your unit cards, so we refer to them a little bit, and you get this quick start guard, which is also nice. This is the rules in brief. I was thinking there wasn't a rule book there. I was like, there's a rule book in everything you get from Flames of War. There is a mini rule book. They've put it in a baggie. You'll see the baggie's got damaged by all this plastic, but hopefully the, ba the, the manual itself is, the manual itself is fine inside. And, and so it's good that they do that. So as a start set, if you want to get into the mid war, I think, I think it's all right. Common criticism of this that I've seen a lot on the internet. There's no infantry in here. Yeah, um, we we played the hit the beach mm. and infantry is quite a complex. I think picking this up, playing the tanks, and then adding infantry later is definitely because this is an interesting mix because your leads are going to be quite static and controlled. You've got your Stuarts that are going to be flying around the, the table, and then you've got the the Panzer threes and Panzer fours and. Mm. It's, it's an outmaneuver game, isn't it? Rather than just a straightforward fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So is, is is this an accurate representation of World War II in the desert? Um, well, there certainly are largely tank-on-tank -tank actions. Mm. The thing is, it's usually us attacking, the Germans falling back and then trashing us with their gun... Re re retreating yeah. onto their gun line and hammering us with anti-tank guns. Well, you do get some German anti-tank guns, so that tactic's not out of the game. But like you said, Mike, we played the Hit the Beach starter, and it is a fantastic starter set in terms of the miniatures. Yeah. You get the infantry, and it's not it's nice, good quality infantry, the Germans, the US Paras. But when you add infantry into a Flames of War game, the complexity of the game scales up immensely. This game gives you tanks, it's going to get you very familiar with the core mechanics of the game. You, all you have to worry about is the bailed out mechanic. You don't yeah. have to worry about pinning. You don't have to worry too much about that broader morale phase. And you have genuine coherent forces. Yeah. These are legal armies. If you go on to develop one or both of these armies, these units weren't bad choices. They weren't necessarily optimum if you're a tournament player. But let's remember what this is. It's a starter yeah. set for a new player. I think it's a fantastic starter set for it. If I was teaching somebody how to play Flames of War from scratch, I wouldn't have any infantry. Yeah. That would be for game two or three, I think. W would you agree? Yeah, yeah, I do agree, yes. Yeah. yeah. Because the tank combat is, is speedy and, it, and it's fun and the models are nice. Um, so, yeah, as a, as, a, as a start set, I don't, I'm not buying into the criticism and the lack of infantry. I think infantry is, is complicated 
I think it's important, uh, absolutely. But this is a starter set. These are the first things you want. Yeah. It's a great showcase of the model range, all of these things. And another good thing about this kit is you don't even have to be interested in Americans. There's everything in this box you can play as British. So if you want it, you know, if you if you bought the other set, the British versus Italian, this is all immediately transportable yeah. into, into, into that group. And the Germans, if you wanted to play um, Eastern Front, the Germans are perfectly usable in the Eastern Front. So there's this a surprising amount of reusability yes. with these models, even if that's what you're into. But it is a starter set, and in that respect, it's good either for a new theatre for you, or particularly for a new player to the system. Mm. Really pleased with it. Definitely do like it as a starter set, yeah. Alright guys, hope that was useful. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hello! If you're enjoying our Flames of War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you.